Let's move over to Vintuk now, where a Patrick Britt economist at Capricorn Asset Management is standing by to unpack some of the latest economic news uh, from Namibia. Patrick, thank you so much for joining us. First off, uh, let's get your views on, I suppose, let's start off with the inflation number we, we had last week and get Capricorn's views on the inflation outlook, because inflation falling back below 6%, it has been trending lower since February. Um, but overall, what are your views? Do you think it's bottoming out or do you think we're still going to see inflation falling lower? Yes, that is right. Um, since February, inflation has been on a largely downward trend from 7.4% to 5.8% seen in uh, August. Um, uh, I do agree this is, uh, we do expect it to be bottoming out, bottoming out quite a lot. Um, there are three reasons for this um, relating to areas of the highest weighting. First of all, it's worth Namibia being a net importer of food. Um, we are very susceptible to global food um, price increases, as seen in the, in the last drought in the, in the States, obviously record low harvests there. Um, this, is, this is bound to translate into Namibian inflation and ex expected to increase food price inflation within the next six months. Uh, we expect it to peak around about the beginning of next year. Um, this, this problem could, of course, be perpetuated if countries like South Africa and, and our trading partners decide to block their exports just in, in, or with the objective of safeguarding their um, domestic, domestic supply. We know that um, Zambia has already done this. Um, secondly, oil prices have taken a turn for the worse again. We had an increase of 33 cents a lit per litre last week, Wednesday. I think in South Africa it was around 94 cents a litre, so um, our fuel price me mechanism, which, is, which of course protects consumers from the volatile um, international oil prices, has been experiencing significant under-recoveries. Under um, as such, we expect prices to increase steadily over the, in, in the months to come. Yeah. And uh, finally, um, the Namibian electricity provider Nampower has set out a, a plan for the next for the next four years, which it plans to increase uh, electricity by 15%. Um, this, of course, will translate into higher, and into higher tariffs. Um, so 15% a year, sorry. Um, so these three things cup up together account for over 50% of the consumption basket of inflation. So with, um, with these all coming together at an inconvenient time, I think we, we have high, pr high price pressure on the, on the horizon. You know, if you've got this high price pressure on the horizon, what does that mean for consumer demand and, uh, you know, consumer ability to continue to spend at the rate that they have? Because you've seen the local economy when it comes to domestic demand being particularly strong. Uh, private sector credit extension numbers, you're looking at growth of 13.3% uh, year on year for the month of July. That is a four-year high. So, so ultimately, one would expect that consumers are going to start feeling the pain of high inflation. No, definitely, and I mean this is only, this is not just last month. This has been this high, strong credit growth has been has been persisting for quite a while, and I think it's, it it speaks a lot about consumer and business confidence in in Namibia. Uh, we don't have a measure of consumer con confidence here, but using something like vehicle sales as a proxy, um, uh, they're also at at, at record highs and. And it's, it's a complete contrast to South Africa, which is which is quite unlikely. So, um, which with with a 50-point basis cut that the central bank instituted last last year, I'm, I'm sure we will see continued credit uptake. But at, at at some stage, we expect this to plateau, and 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 the central bank itself doesn't think that this could be sustainable, especially in the certain areas of credit growth, such as. Um, overdraft lending and installment credits, which they said in their statement they were conser concerned about, and in previous statements, which makes the, I won't lie, the cut was a bit of a surprise to, to some analysts on the yeah. market with their dovish um, statements in previous times. I suppose perhaps also following suit from South Africa and knowing that um, the, the governor on this end said that they were really just taking out insurance for the future, uh, but not necessarily the start of a, a cycle uh, in terms of you know, lowering interest rates. Uh, but break down the credit extension numbers for us and where, we've, where you've seen particularly bullish growth and bullish strength when it comes to those numbers. 
Well, again, we can look at the weightings, and, and mortgage lending makes up uh, uh, the vast majority of on consumer, consumer credit, and that's been quite boyish. That's around 15%. Um, what's, what's more worrying is installment credit and overdraft lending, as mentioned earlier, which are areas of concern. They have been growing at over over 20%. So I think the, those have been the, the real the real bullish factors in, in credit extensions in Namibia. When it comes to wages, I mean, are wages keeping up with inflation and you know all the cost pressures um, in the economy? Well, I think inflation has been um, quite subdued until now. I think it's averaging in the last 12 months about six percent. And, and we expect that wages are going up more or less um, similarly. Yep. Um, and, and luckily for us, we haven't had the, this uh, industrial action that, that you have been having down south. So luckily, no, no pressure on that front. Let's talk about the interest rate environment when it comes to real interest rates, because uh, for July, real interest rates in our city were sitting at 0%. Um, if you've got inflation that continues to rise and uh, interest rates um, you know, from the central bank level and also at banks sitting at these lower levels, that means you're going to move into a situation where you've got negative real interest rates. And what impact do you see that having on consumer spending habits and then their propensity or their desire to save money? Well, obviously, the opportunity cost of, of saving money has has increased like, significantly when you talk when you're talking about negative negative interest rates. So, if um, as as expected, or if, if our expectations come to light uh, with high high inflation and relatively upward sticky interest rates, we will see that negative interest rate or negative real interest rate rather growing quite substantially and. And and won't and won't do any well for I mean Namibians are notoriously poor savers, similar to South Africans. And the central bank has has also issued statements saying that they're worried about the savings level here. So with negative real interest rates, I mean that's that that won't help the cause at all. Overall, um, let's go back to the interest rate cycle. Do you think that um, the central bank would be looking for another cut, or is it still a case of a very strong demand in the domestic economy, demand side of the economy? I think that's not a concern for the central bank. If anything, um, the high growth levels are, are and, and especially the composition of such, are, are, are of quite a concern. Yeah. And, 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 and to that extent, I don't think um, there, there's much, um, much room for, 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 the, for the central bank to cut rates further. But, like, but, but it all depends. We're obviously sharing a common monetary union with South Africa. so. Um, as such, interest rates would be quite similar in the member countries. It would depend what uh, Jill Marcus says on Thursdays, on Thursday, but I doubt that we have any more room for accommodative or expansionary monetary policy actions, at least in the next six months or so.